Python has more than 400,000 packages, but if you want to build a career in data science, you better know these eight Python modules that you'll be using very frequently as a data scientist. So let's start with the first one, which is NumPy. If you're manipulating huge volume of sequential data, and if you're using Python list, then your life is going to be slow. For that reason, you need NumPy, which provides n-dimensional array object that is very, very memory efficient and fast as well. It also provides so many ready-made built-in functions that you will be using often for your needs. I'm going to provide you a reference of NumPy tutorial playlist, which even a high school student can understand it easily. The second one is Pandas. Pandas is built on top of NumPy array and it provides fast and memory efficient tabular data structure called data frame. Now, if you're doing exploratory data analysis or machine learning, you will have to use Pandas. Go check any Jupyter notebook on Kaggle. Most of them are using Pandas already. Now, let's say you're doing simple weather analysis and if you use plain Python, for that, you will have to write 70 lines of code and the same thing can be done in five lines in Panda. So it's super convenient. I have explained that in my very first video in Panda's tutorial playlist on YouTube, which received more than 2 million views. So check out the free YouTube tutorial playlist link in the video description below. The next one is Matplotlib or Seaborn. You can use one of these libraries for doing data visualization. Let's say as a data scientist, you are doing exploratory data analysis. Now you want to find outliers or you want to just visualize some data patterns or maybe you want to plot a confusion matrix after your machine learning model is built. For all of these purposes, Matplotlib or Seaborn can be extremely useful. They are very, very popular in data science community. Once again, there is a playlist for this. Then comes Scrappy or Beautiful Soup. Again, you don't have to use two libraries. You can use one of them. And these are used for web crawling. Now, if you look at any data science project, the first step in that project is always data collection. You can collect data either from your organization or you can buy ready-made third-party data. But often you will see data scientists do web scraping. They go to internet and they scrap different websites. Uh, for collecting the data and in Python Scrappy and Beautiful Soup are the two main libraries for this purpose. Then comes our 800 pound gorilla called Scikit-learn. If you want to do statistical machine learning, classification or regression, you have to use Scikit-learn. It has become the de facto library in the entire data science community. Without the knowledge of Scikit-learn, it will be very, very hard to get a data scientist job. Once again, here is a machine learning playlist which has received more than 5 million views and this playlist contains the theory, coding and exercises. Deep learning is a subdomain of machine learning where you use neural networks to solve variety of problems such as image classification, cats versus dogs. Hmm, that's boring. Baby Yoda versus dog, language translation, recommendation engine, autonomous cars and so on. TensorFlow from Google and PyTorch from Facebook are the two prominent libraries for doing deep learning. Once again for TensorFlow, here is a free playlist which has received again a huge number of views and that contains theory, coding and exercise. Spacey is the next one. It's a library used to solve natural language processing or NLP problems. So if you're a data scientist who are working specifically in NLP domain, then you need to know this. There are data scientists who don't touch NLP problems. In that case, it's okay to not have knowledge on this library. The benefit of this library is that it is very good for beginners, very user-friendly syntax, and you can get started pretty fast. There is another library called NLTK, which people sometimes use along with Spacey. But with Spacey, there are so many features which are inbuilt and you can get going pretty fast. You'll notice that the data scientists working in NLP domain will be using Spacey, NLP, and they will be using sometimes PyTorch, TensorFlow, etc. along with these libraries. So most of the time, if you're solving any NLP problem, you'll be using variety of libraries, but Spacey seems to be the most popular among all. Once again, here is an NLP playlist along with theory, coding and exercises. And this playlist uses Spacey as a library. The last one is OpenCV, which is used for image processing. So if you're a data scientist working in image processing domain, then you need to know this. OpenCV library provides many ready-made functions for doing image processing, such as 
let's say you want to increase the quality of an image and you want to use adaptive stress holding you can write few lines of code in OpenCV and there you go the quality is improved once again similar to spacey data scientists working in image processing domain will be using many other libraries along with OpenCV. So they might be using PyTorch, TensorFlow, etc. along with OpenCV to solve a given business problem. Now, if you don't know Python, I have a nice Python course on my website codebasics.io and in that course we have completed end-to-end -end project which is using OpenCV, NumPy, Pandas and many other libraries which I have mentioned in this particular video. So go check it out. There are many videos in that particular course which are available for free and you can read the course reviews as well. I hope you found this video to be useful. If you did, please share it with your friends who are trying to build a career in data science. If you have any questions, there is a comment box below.